This is Bob Capetta from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and this is another lesson on power series. We're given the function f of x is 5 over 12 minus 2x, and the goal is to express that function as a power series and find the interval of convergence. Then after we do that, we want to find the derivative. So we'll have a power series, take its derivative, express that as a power series, and then find the interval of convergence for that derivative function. Before we do that, let's remind ourselves of the properties of a geometric series. So we have an initial term of a0 and a common ratio of r. a0 plus a0 r plus a0 r squared plus a0 r cubed plus a0 r to the fourth plus dot dot dot. That will equal the first term over 1 minus the common ratio as long as the common ratio is between negative 1 and 1. The function that we have is 5 over 12 minus 2x, which looks a little bit like a0 over 1 minus r. The problem is there's a 12 in the slot where there should be a 1. So if I divide numerator and denominator by 12, 5 over 12, numerator, 12 over 12 minus 2x over 12. At this point, the 12 over 12 becomes a 1, and we match the form of a0 over 1 minus r. Recognizing this, then a0, our initial term, will be 5 twelfths and our common ratio will be x over 6. Now what can we do with this? We can express a geometric series that will well approximate this function on some interval, on some interval of convergence. So what would 5 over 12 minus 2x look like? Well, the first term, the initial term, is 5 twelfths. The common ratio is x over 6, so it would be 5 twelfths plus 5 twelfths times x over 6 plus 5 twelfths times x over 6 squared plus 5 twelfths times x over 6 cubed, etc. So here's our geometric series written in long form. We can also write that in sigma notation. So we have it this way. 5 twelfths is the initial term, common ratio to the k power, x over 6 to the k as k goes from 0 to infinity. Now where does this converge? We know that a geometric series converges if r is between negative 1 and positive 1. So this will converge if this x over 6 is between negative 1 and positive 1. Multiplying by 6 would then tell us that the interval of convergence would be from negative 6 to 6. With the geometric series test, we do not need to check endpoints because if r equals 1 or if r equals negative 1, we know that the geometric series diverges. So we're able to finish this one saying that we have indeed the interval of convergence. So here's our long form of f of x. And here is the sigma form of f of x together with its interval of convergence. Now what would we like to do next? We'd like to rewrite this to help us take the derivative. x over 6 to the k is x to the k over 6 to the k. If we are going to take the derivative of this series, we take the derivative of each term. The derivative of x to the k is kx to the k minus 1. 6 to the k is going to be 6 to the first, 6 to the second, 6 to the third, 6 to the fourth, etc. as we're summing it up. So don't concern yourself with taking a derivative of something like that. The variable is x. We want to get f prime of x. So our derivative of x to the k is x, excuse me, is k x to the k minus 1. So there's our 5 twelfths. There's our 1 over 6 to the k. And then the derivative of x to the k is kx to the k minus 1. So at this point, we've actually constructed a series for f prime of x. Now, the interval of convergence for f of x was negative 6 to 6. Let's see if the interval of convergence for f prime of x is the same or somehow different. So in this situation, we're going to appeal to the ratio test. So a sub k, our kth element of the sequence, is 5 over 12, 1 over 6 to the k, times kx to the k minus 1. The next thing we need is a sub k plus 1. 
if I have a sub k plus 1, replace this k with k plus 1, replace this k with k plus 1, replace this k with k plus 1. See what that gives us? 5 over 12 times 1 over 6 to the k plus 1 times k plus 1 times x to the k plus 1 minus 1. Of course, what does that give us? That just gives us x to the k. For the ratio test, we take the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k. This divided by this. You'll notice a lot will cancel. But looking at this, what do we have? We have this first piece, a sub k plus 1, divided by this piece, a sub k. a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k. If we are going to divide these two fractions, we should invert and multiply. I'll also just go ahead and use one set of absolute values. So absolute value a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k. Notice 5 twelfths times 1 over 6 to the k plus 1 times k plus 1 x to the k over 1 times, take the reciprocal, reciprocal of 5 twelfths becomes 12 fifths, reciprocal of 1 over 6 to the k becomes 6 to the k over 1, reciprocal of k x to the k minus 1 becomes 1 over k x to the k minus 1. So what cancels here? 5 cancels 5, 12 cancels 12. How about the 6's? I have 6 to the k upstairs, and I have 6 to the k plus 1 downstairs. So there's one extra 6 in the denominator, so we will continue to have a 6 in the denominator once we divide all the others out. Regarding the x's, we have x to the k on top, we have x to the k minus 1 on the bottom. Again, more x's on top by 1, so I'll continue to have an x to the first on top. And then how about the k's? k plus 1 over k. Notice the 1 over 6 from 6 to the k over 6 to the k plus 1. Notice k plus 1 over k. And notice x over 1 simplified version of x to the k over x to the k minus 1. The ratio test converges if this limit is less than 1. So the next thing I've got to do is I've got to take the limit of the absolute value of a sub k plus 1 over a sub k and find out when that limit is less than 1. So the limit of that will be the limit of 1 sixth k plus 1 over k times x over 1. At this point, k is changing, x is not. 1 sixth can come out in front of the limit sign. x, actually absolute value of x, can come out in front of the limit sign, leaving just k plus 1 over k still beyond the limit. But what is the limit as k goes to infinity of k plus 1 over k? That's just 1. So this becomes absolute x plus 1 times 1, which of course is simply the absolute value of x over 6. For the ratio test, that will converge if that limit is less than 1, if the absolute value of that limit is less than 1, or if that limit is between negative 1 and 1. So how do we make sense of that? What are we going to say? Absolute value of x over 6 is less than 1 tells us that uh, x over 6 is between negative 1 and 1. And then multiplying by 6, we can conclude that negative 6 is less than x is less than 6. But we used the ratio test this time. And for the ratio test, you should check the endpoints because the ratio test is inconclusive if we get a value of 1. So what that means is we should take a look at negative 6, we should take a look at 6, and determine whether or not the function converges at those points. So this was our derivative function that we obtained after taking the derivative of the power series for f of x. I want to plug in 6 for x. So the only change is that x becomes 6, so instead of x to the k minus 1, we get 6 to the k minus 1. Now, does this converge? That's the question. 6 to the k minus 1 upstairs, 6 to the k downstairs. There's one more k, one more 6 downstairs and upstairs. So when these divide out, I'm just going to be left with 1 sixth. But the k is not going anywhere. So as k goes from 1 to infinity of 5 twelfths times k over 6, 
we have this constant here, but k keeps growing. k is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. So this sequence does not converge to 0. If that's the case, then the series diverges by the nth term test, or by the divergence test. So no, 6 is not in the interval of convergence. How about negative 6? Same kind of argument. This x is replaced with negative 6. This is a little bit more challenging in that I want to replace negative 6 with negative 1 times 6. So this will be negative 1 to the k minus 1 times 6 to the k minus 1. That will enable you to divide out the 6's. So 6 to the k minus 1 over 6 to the k gives me one more 6 downstairs. So when I divide this piece by this piece, it just replaced with the 6 downstairs. Then I have 5 over 12, 1 over 6, k, and negative 1 to the k minus 1. Does that converge? Well, this thing oscillates, right? I mean, negative 1 to the k minus 1 bounces between negative 1 and positive 1. But again, k increases. k is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. So this sequence also does not go to 0. So if that's the case, the series diverges, again, by the nth term test or the divergence test. So we checked both endpoints. We checked 6 and we checked negative 6. In neither case did the function converge. So our interval of convergence is simply x is between negative 6 and positive 6. And that will conclude this lesson.